Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Storm Kieran, the third named storm of this year's storm season. Uh, and this storm will likely bring some pretty severe weather to parts of the UK during Wednesday and Thursday, especially uh, across parts of southern England and perhaps southern Wales uh, as well. And as you can see, this chart is kind of giving a brief teaser of what's to come in this video. So we'll start off by looking at the uh, metaphors warnings on Thursday. The main warning, if you like, is this wind warning, currently a yellow wind warning, and that's uh, issued across parts of West Wales, South Wales, Southwest England, kind of areas along the south coast and southern England, and then to parts of eastern England there. And you can see that comes into effect at 9pm, uh, and then goes out of effect very, very late on Thursday. So it's basically uh, Wednesday evening and all day Thursday, we've got this yellow warning in effect. Uh, and as you can see, Storm Kieran here, uh, expected to bring a spell of very strong winds to southern parts of the UK, uh, 50 to 60 miles an hour along coasts, perhaps as high as 70 to 80 miles an hour along English Channel coast as well as Cornwall, and then the low likelihood of gusts as high as 90 miles an hour, and then inland um, perhaps 40 to 50 miles an hour, possibly 60 to 70 miles an hour across higher ground. Now if we take a look at the impact matrix, uh, you can see here uh, it's a low likelihood and a high impact warning which basically means the confidence on the forecast is very low. We don't really know at this stage the details of how strong the wind will be, where it's going to be worst, kind of with the timings. But we do know that it has the potential to be quite a high impact event, which means that as confidence does increase, we may see upgrades to amber and possibly, it's hard to say though, red warnings um, uh, of wind. And then taking a quick look at the rain warnings, because rain is not so much of a threat uh, with Storm Kieran, we can see 20 to 30 millimeters of rain likely, possibly 40 to 60 millimeters of rain uh, in these areas, kind of same as the wind warning Wales, parts of southern England, southwest England. And then across Northern Ireland, we're going to see perhaps as much as 60 millimeters there, uh, and then similar situation across northeast England, perhaps as much as 60 millimeters across higher ground. And this is all rain falling on already saturated ground, so um, could be some more flooding issues. Um, that kind of thing and i think we've actually got amber warnings of rain out across parts of northern ireland today as you can see here unrelated with storm kieran but perhaps up to 100 millimeters of rain um up, uh, during kind of this evening and till tomorrow morning across parts of northern ireland there which could cause some flooding so you may be kind of wondering what is causing this storm to develop uh, and it's basically the main thing is this very very powerful jet stream and i'm going to use the net weather jet stream forecast as you can see here and the bright colours are kind of indicating winds in excess of 200 miles an hour, very high above the ground. And this is kind of going to be powering our storm system, which will emerge off the coast of Canada during about kind of the next 12 hours or so. And initially it's quite weak, but as it gets picked up by this very strong moving band of air um, through here, let me change the colour to black so you can see, as it gets picked up through this very strong um moving band of air what's going to happen is the pressure is going to rapidly deepen because the jet stream is essentially kind of removing air from the surface and as that happens the kind of pressure deepens and more air is kind of being removed in a sense so it's kind of got a knock-on effect and that's basically what's going to happen to the low it's going to rapidly deepen and by about wednesday evening it's going to be positioned here just the southwest of the uk and what's going to happen is the jet stream kind of dips into a kind of a u-shape uh, as you can see there, you can watch how it kind of dips into a U-shape. And so our low is kind of going to sit around here, just in the corner of that uh, that U. And what's going to happen, it's, it's going to start to weaken, uh, and it's going to kind of linger around over the UK for a couple of days, but not before it's brought a lot of very strong winds and very heavy rain. And if we take a look at the satellite now, you can actually see this band of cloud right now across Canada and parts of the northeast US. Uh, and this is kind of our frontal zone. Uh, and if you're not aware, a low pressure system uh, will generally always form from a frontal zone on the surface and then an upper level disturbance kind of generating uh, lift along that frontal zone and causing the pressure to uh, decrease at the surface and the low gets going. And this is our kind of frontal zone that we're looking at and our upper level disturbance is kind of likely moving similar to this kind of along these X's and as it kind of interacts with the um, with this kind of very elongated uh, frontal zone, it's going to start to develop a low pressure centre, likely somewhere around here, uh, and that's going to get picked up by the jet stream as we just talked about there. I just thought it would be cool to show some kind of real observations. Uh, so you may be wondering what kind of uh, track is the storm going to take, 
what are the wind speeds, uh, what's the timing, and right now it is pretty uncertain. This is the GFS Ensemble, so the GFS is a computer model, and then the Ensemble is a kind of uh, subset of that model where they have 30 different kind of mini models, if you like. They all run on slightly different conditions, and we have lots of different kind of members. They each give you kind of different ideas on the possible solutions and kind of increase the confidence on certain scenarios. And here, the chart that we have plotted is uh, each of these lines is each of the tracks of the ensemble members, sorry, each of the tracks of the low from each ensemble member. And then each of the colors is representing the strength. So kind of the yellow, orangey colors are stronger than the kind of bluey, greeny colors. Uh, and as you can see, we have a fairly large spread in these lines and dots. In fact, you can see the ensemble members suggest there could be a path perhaps as far south and east as the Isle of Wight and then perhaps as far uh, north and west as Wales or even the Isle of Man. So even at this range of just kind of two to three days, there is still quite a lot of uncertainty, uh, which is kind of a problem because especially with the potential to be high impact, as you can see kind of these uh, yellow orange colours suggesting uh, perhaps pressures around the 950 millibars, which is exceptionally low uh, any time of year across southern England, perhaps or even record breaking at this time of year, which we'll see uh, over the next few days if that does occur. With the strength of the low, the winds can be strong and we don't quite know where and when they will be strongest, it's kind of confusing. So that's just something to bear in mind when we get into the actual model output uh, now. So I'm going to start showing you some kind of different solutions uh, from the different computer models. Uh, they all kind of have different physics and mass inputted into each model which kind of result in some of these differences uh, but they kind of give you an idea of the possible scenarios which might occur so we'll start off here by looking at the gfs run this is the com uh, sorry the american computer model and you can see here this is our low storm kieran uh, and this is nine o'clock on wednesday and already some strong winds starting to affect the uh, southwest and uh, let me just change the color of that pen starting to affect the southwest during the evening and you can see those strong winds kind of spread in a band ahead of the low across southern England uh, and then the strongest winds actually remain in the channel as you can see here uh, the grey and white kind of stays in the channel where it does affect parts of Cornwall and it does actually try to get into parts of south and southeast England there as well so that's one possible scenario and it moves north uh, sorry moves north bringing generally quite windy conditions 50 to 60 miles per hour quite widely across the south and then in coasts perhaps as high as kind of 60 70 miles an hour so that's one possible scenario if we look at the german computer model and i'm going to zoom in slightly for this one just so you can see a bit better uh, what you may be able to notice is that this uh, in this one the winds are a lot stronger in fact this particular model is showing winds over 100 miles an hour uh, in that kind of gray and black which is probably a bit extreme this weather model has a bias of sometimes overdoing the wind speed but still suggesting very very strong winds alarmingly strong winds but in fact this time they are more focused across parts of northwest france and the channel islands as you can see here that is where the focus of the winds are and the southwest of england uh, does actually get some pretty strong winds on this one as you can see Cornwall hit by 70 to 80 mile an hour gusts and the south coast of southeast England does also get some pretty strong winds but they are not quite as strong uh, as the other model and as strong as the winds are in the channel so that's the German model if I show you the French model you can see the 12 o'clock run so by the way computer models are run four times a day or generally uh, and the 12 o'clock run here uh, sorry midday run which had collected data from midday. What this shows is a fairly concerning storm with Storm Kieran tracking up from uh, the southwest like that, moving in this kind of general direction, bringing exceptionally strong winds across parts of southwest England there, over 100 miles an hour in Cornwall, uh, and also pretty strong winds, generally 70 to 80 miles an hour across lots of southern England, uh, and even into parts of kind of central southern England and the Midlands there as well. So this is perhaps the most concerning of all the model runs. However, if I show you something interesting, uh, if we go to the latest uh, run, which is just coming out on this chart, oh, sorry, on this website here, the six o'clock run uh, actually shows a significantly further south low here, uh, and actually notice how much of these stronger winds are offshore compared to the past uh, run. So if you kind of keep a mental image of this, and then if I go back to the twelve o'clock, you can see on this uh, on this particular run the low was further north with strong winds inland. So what this is telling us is that the models are shifting around 
uh, a fair bit at the moment. There's still lots of uncertainty. Uh, and what that means is that uh, we don't quite know where the strongest winds are going to be. And that's particularly important because the difference here could be very small, but the impact could be huge. For example, if this run to were to occur, it would be pretty bad across much of southern England. But if this is just 100 miles or so to the south, and the strongest winds are in the channel, England is not going to see much of an impact. Uh, and then the same goes if it's further north, or for example, if this uh, German model, the Icon, if that was further north, we'd be seeing another pretty devastating storm um, across parts of the south. But right now it's not further north, and it's actually treaded further south. Um, so there's still quite a lot of model fluctuation, um, and that's because the jet stream is quite complex, especially the pattern of the jet stream. So it's going to be quite hard to tell, uh, and as you can see here, uh, even the ensembles do not agree that much. So the next kind of day or so, even until Wednesday, probably going to be a lot of chopping and changing uh, in the models, in the past, in the strongest winds. So especially if you're kind of inland southern England, London area, parts of central southern England, you're going to need to keep an eye on the forecast. But if you're along coastal areas uh, and kind of southwest areas, so Cornwall, and generally kind of from the Isle of Wight up towards Kent, kind of that area of the south coast, the confidence of very strong winds is pretty high. It's almost unavoidable. And if I show you this model, for example, you can see we get those strong winds there and those strong winds across the south coast. If I show you the uh, Arpeg, you can, sorry, the, the French model also called the Arpeg, you can see same there, GFS, same there. So really these two main areas here, um, Cornwall and kind of the south coast, the eastern half of the south coast, it looks fairly likely you're going to see strong disruptive winds and then kind of the more kind of question mark is areas further inland so kind of more of southwest england uh, and then kind of southern england into the midlands and parts of eastern england so that's kind of the summary for the storm a lot of uncertainty but i hope that kind of gave, gave you an idea uh, of the kind of thing to expect and i'll do try and do another video update uh, tomorrow and Wednesday, and then Thursday will probably be the day of the storm, so that might not be necessary. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and step to date with Metal Force Warnings, everyone. Bye-bye.